Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing well. Staying safe out there. And uh, for those of you that are new here, I'm Jim. I make tutorial videos about editing your photos. Just looking to explore creative options and uh, share tips and tricks that I have. And one of the things that I talked about in a recent video was the tone curve, which I think is intimidating to people. It was certainly intimidating to me when I first started using it a number of years ago. And uh, the great thing about it is it's incredibly powerful. The scary thing about it is that it's incredibly powerful, and that is if you don't know what you're doing, it can um, sort of easily make your photo look really crazy. Um, it gives you a lot of control over the photo, but learning how to use it's, a, I think, a key skill. And I'm no master of it. I use it on a fair amount of photos, but I don't use it all the time. But it, I think it's something that really can help your understanding of the editing process and kind of what's going on sort of behind the scenes. So we're going to dive into that today. Here's a photo. I'm in Luminar 4. I'm in the Light tool on the Essentials tab. And if you click Advanced Settings, you get down here and you get a tone curve. Now, you'll see in the background there's a histogram. Note that that histogram is essentially mirroring what's happening with the histogram up there. So, um, the Tone Curve, also known as the Curves tool, it basically gives you control over the tones, as the, the name implies. So that would be highlights, shadows, and midtones, but it also gives you control over the color. So this first button here, the gray one, gives you control over the tones in the image, and then this button lets you work on the reds, this button lets you work on the greens, and that button lets you work on the blues. So red, green, blue, also known as RGB. These are the primary colors in your images. I'm going to get into those in a second. Most people start on the tone curve and do something like this where they drop a point there and there. And what they'll do is they'll just bump this up a little bit. So that's kind of the mid-tones, a little bit of the highlights. And this is kind of the shadows, a little bit of the darker mid-tones. And they'll make this S shape, known as an S curve. And it basically allows you to create a bit more contrast in your photo as you see there. So if you look at the before, and the after, I've gone from a fairly flat photo to one that's a bit more punchy. And, you know, it's not a significant change, but I think it's more visually appealing. And so that's what a lot of people will do is they'll make this little S curve. And then that may be all that they do. It's a great way to quickly add contrast to your photo. Now, I've reset that. I wanted to point out a couple of other things. There's three little uh, buttons here at the bottom, and they allow you to slide um, um, along this bottom axis. So the way that I look at the tone curve is the bottom left is the shadows and the upper right are the midtones. So if you want to move this around, this is shadows. And you can see as I move that, I'm increasing shadows. Or if I go this way, I'm, um, or I should say, increasing the amount of shadows. So I'm darkening the shadows going that way. This way, I'm brightening the shadows. So I'm making it more of a faded image. That's often how people will create vintage or matte look kind of um, you know, uh, looks in their photo. Up here, this gives you control over the highlights, so I can brighten the highlights or I can darken the highlights. The bottom, this uh, these three buttons correspond, the left one is shadows, the middle one is midtones, and the uh, one on the right is highlights. So I can also move along this axis, I can darken the shadows that way. Note that I can't go uh, like this where I'm lightening the shadows. Midtones, you can move either way, so you can go like that or that to brighten or uh, darken the midtones. I'm going to hit reset. By the way, the midtones are also represented here in the middle. So you can do a similar thing by dragging, uh, setting a point and dragging it down or up to uh, impact the midtones. And then on the right, you've got the highlights. You can drag them this way to increase, but note you don't have a way to pull the highlights down like you do by dragging that. So what a lot of people will do is, uh, as I said, you can set um, your, uh, your S-curve there, but some people may come in here and say, you know, I'm going to set my darker and, and lighter areas first, so I'm going to take those points out. You might want to collapse the zone, for lack of a better word, um, or the range that the photo can take in the highlights and shadows. So you can do that by setting those and then come in and set uh, an S-curve. And basically, you've sort of collapsed a little bit the area um, that uh, your shadows and highlights are going to move within by moving those bottom points. So here I've basically collapsed the shadows and the highlights a little bit and then added an S-curve and it's slightly different than the S-curve that I would get just by doing it in kind of the traditional way like that. Now I'm going to hit reset again. Another thing to know is you can add up to 10 points on this line. So you can just come in here and that's going to give you a lot of control over specific targeted areas in the tones. 
the um, and and so all I do uh, is I recommend moving things around. You can kind of see the impact that just moving some of these sliders because what these um, additional points are doing are kind of anchoring and isolating the area that you're working on. So if uh, if you have this point here that I'm on, because it's anchored on either side, it's gonna move just within a certain defined area. Whereas if I take a point and move it like that, it's gonna impact more of the photo because the line is moving more freely. So I think of them as anchor points. Also note, you can put 10, you can also just double click and that will get rid of a point. So if you've added a bunch of points and then he moves something and you're like, oh God, this looks terrible, I hate it, just double click and uh, reset that. I can do that with this point and also that point. Now, one thing that I think is important to do when you're messing around with the tone curve is because you're working on shadows and highlights is to, you, uh, you may notice there's these little triangles up here. You can click to turn those on. Also, if you hit the J key, whoops, I just zoomed in at the same time. If you hit the J key, that will automatically turn those on, at least on a Mac. I don't know on a Windows if it does the same thing, but J is a hotkey, so that will allow you to turn on those and it'll mark blown pixels that are too bright with red and those that are too dark with blue. So if I come in and start making adjustments, then having those on allows me to see where I'm creating either too much shadow or too much highlight. So let's just mess around a little bit and see what happens. Um, you can see the red is still there. It's not really growing. Um, the dark, let's see. I, I mean, that's telling me that I don't have any really dark parts of the photo. In other words, no deep dark blacks, which uh, you know essentially are complete black. Now, if I start doing this, you can see some dark black will start creeping in because you can see that in the blue. Um, and I've got a little bit of red that's showing me where the highlights are blown. But if I hit J key and hide that again, you can see it's just a little bit in the photo. My opinion is it's okay to have a little bit of that red and a little bit of that blue creeping into your photo. It's just what you want to avoid is doing something like that um, or you know maybe that where everything is kind of blown. Then you've got a really overdone image. But if you control those shadows and have a little bit of black creeping in and a little bit of that white, generally speaking, if I hide that again, you've got a, a finely contrasted image. It's just something to think about, and I think it's useful to use those pixel indicators as you know light indicators, which is basically what they are. They're telling you, okay, I've got too much shadow or too much highlight, or if you've got just a little bit, like in this case, I actually think it looks fine. So those are useful guides. I've turned them off again. I'm gonna hit reset and show you a couple of other tips and tricks with the tone curve. Now, one thing the tone curve is really great at is helping you with black and white conversions. And so I'm gonna go into black and white conversion, and I'm gonna say convert to black and white, and all I've done is just change it to black and white. I've changed none of the tones. But now, because you have so much control over contrast and tone with the tone curve, it's an excellent companion to use in combination with the black and white um, conversion filter. So you can come in here and do some really high contrast black and white images that I think look pretty amazing. So something like that, you'll notice that, um, there you go, turning on the, uh, the indicator again gives me a nice indication of where things are in terms of light. But a lot of times in black and white images, people will go over the top with contrast, create really high contrast images, and I think those look fine. So you've got some flexibility there. And one thing I often do is I'll convert to black and white, and then I'll just come in here and experiment. Um, and I'll just move things around, and you know, you might just start collapsing the, uh, the, the zone there, and you know, just kind of having fun and experimenting. Um, I'm doing a little bit more high contrast here. Let me hit the J key. I've got a lot more blue, not a whole lot of red, which is fine, but a lot more blue, but still, it's a high contrast image. I don't think it looks bad as a black and white. As a color image, it may not look that good. Let's just go check. Yeah, as a color image, it looks too contrasty, too orange and too dark, but as a black and white, it's a nice high contrast image. So something else to think about um, when using the tone curve is because you have so much control over tones, it's a great way to, um, or it's a great idea to pair that with the black and white conversion filter. Now, while we're at it, we haven't talked about the other three buttons, the red, green, and blue. So they give you control over the red, green, and blue, as the name implies, but they also give you control over the opposite colors. So 
One thing I like to show when I'm talking about the tone curve is the color wheel. And so the red, the opposite of red is cyan, and the opposite of green is magenta, the opposite of blue is yellow. So those are the colors when you start manipulating each of these individual color channels that you have control over, basically. Red helps you control red and cyan, the green one helps you control green and magenta, and the blue one helps you control blue and yellow. So you can come in here, and um, I'm not gonna do, uh, I'm, actually, let me just set a little bit of a tone curve here, just kind of a simple one. Uh, just to get a little bit of contrast, a little bit better looking image. Now in the red, what I'll often do with the colors is I might start here with the midtones and just move them one way or the other. I'm dragging them down, so that's away from the red, which means I'm going more to, toward the cyan. You can see how that's impacting the image. And the opposite is true as well. I'm gonna reset that and show you it with the green. With the green, just grabbing the midtones, you can see I'm going more to the green by lifting that, or more to the magenta. I'm gonna reset that. And then with blue, same thing, right? I can go more blue in the image, which I think looks really good on this image, or I can go less blue, which is more yellow. Now, I'm just doing that in the highlights, but keep in mind, you have the ability to come in here and say, I want more blue in the highlights, and I want less blue in the shadows. So I'm gonna pull that back a little bit. If you pull too far in the shadows, you'll start to get a lot more of the yellow in the shadows, which by the way, that's basically bicolor toning, which is a filter or tool that's no longer in Luminar 4, it was in Luminar 3, but you can recreate bicolor toning by messing around with the color channels in the tone curve. I'm gonna move that back, I'm gonna pull this down just a little bit, and there you go, just by adding a slight S curve in the tone uh, curve, and then in the blue, adding a little bit of blue to the highlights and kind of controlling it in the shadows, I've created, I think, a pretty nice looking image. And that's before and after. Now you can also do something like that where you take that and do a black and white conversion and then come in and play with the tone curve because this is gonna represent the color tones that are in the image. So let me reset blue. And what you can do is start to manipulate these. There's a fair amount of blue, not a ton, but you can move the blue around to see how that's impacting your image. Let me see also on the red. You can see as I lift the red, you're getting a brighter image because there's a fair amount of that orangey kind of glow. And there you go, I'm pulling it down. So it's another thing to keep in mind is that you can manipulate the regular tone curve, which is this gray button, with a black and white conversion, and then also go in and use or manipulate the specific color channels to further impact that image. Okay, and then I've got a separate image here. There's one other thing that's kind of interesting. It's very different, it's very artistic, but it's kind of fun. I find that it works fairly well on night images. So I changed images here and got this one, but because the tone curve is, uh, you know, it kind of goes like, uh, it slants from bottom left to top right. Did you know you can invert it? So you can go like this, you can take the shadows all the way to the bright end and the highlights all the way to the dark and basically create kind of a solarized image. You may, may be seeing the solarization effect uh, before other products have a, a, a filter, for lack of a better word, that uh, gives you solarization. But if you invert the tone curve, you can basically create that. And then you can come in here and do other things to help manipulate that. But one thing I like to do is do an invert um, with the shadows, and then you can create a V. Just take this and pull it down, and I think you get a pretty interesting look there. That's an invert, not really an invert, but that's a V tone curve. So you just move the shadows all the way up, take the basically the midtones all the way down and create kind of a V. And then again, you can come in here and start to manipulate things to create a little bit different image. Again, depends on what you're looking for, but you could also manipulate highlights and shadows in here. So I'm gonna come in here and just kind of play around a little bit. Um, note that um, you can move contrast, you can move exposure uh, and get a really different kind of looking image. Um, you can even move color temperature to kind, kind of do some different and interesting things. Not a necessarily a look that I would stake my artistic claim on, but you know I don't know that you want to do this a lot of the time, but it's a fun, creative way to do something different if you just want to ex experiment, especially these days when people are kind of quarantined in their homes. It's an interesting and unique thing you can do with a photo. Okay, and the last thing is that because you have so much control over the image, you can edit a photo just using the tone curve. So you might come in here and make a little bit of an S curve and say, you know, hey, I really like that. It's got a little bit of contrast, it's nice, but I don't really like the colors. So maybe you come over here to the blues and maybe you wanna lift the midtones a little bit, give it a little bit bluer tint. I like that, I think that looks pretty cool. 
Here's the thing though, is if you wanna do more specifics with the blue, you might need to mask it in, but you can't do that on the base layer. So go add a new adjustment layer and then come into the tone curve again and come into blue. And let's say I like that blue look, but I don't like the blue in the sidewalk. Maybe I wanna bring the blues down. So maybe I wanna do something about like that. I can just say edit mask and brush and I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna increase the size of my brush and I'm basically painting a decrease in blue into the sidewalk here. So I'm doing kind of a sloppy masking job because I'm doing it quickly, but you can see that I've painted over that sidewalk, which is basically a blue reduction on that sidewalk. So I've added blue to the rest of the image, taken it out of the sidewalk. But now that I've got that mask there, maybe I wanna add another adjustment layer and go back into the tone curve and do something else. Here, maybe I wanna come over here and just experiment with some of the tones. Maybe I wanna pull down, let's see, I'm trying to figure out what I wanna do here. Maybe I wanna do something about like that and pull down some of these mid-tones. Actually, you know what I wanna do? I wanna go into the blue and do that. So I wanna pull these blue mid-tones a little bit down, something about like that to get a little bit more blue in those areas. Uh, so that's impacting the entire photo. Let me turn that layer off. There's before and after. So I'm getting a little bit more blue in some of those mid-tones. Some of it's creeping back into the sidewalk, but it's not bad. Um, and I like what it's doing to the overall look of the photo. But maybe I wanna add another adjustment layer and come in and do a little bit more customization. In this case, maybe on the tone, maybe I wanna take some, uh, add a little bit of more contrast and pull down a little bit more of those mid-tones uh, maybe bump the shadows a tiny bit, something about like that, highlights. Maybe I wanna go a little bit brighter. I'm just creating a little bit more contrasty image and just kind of playing with the color tones a little bit. And maybe I like that just for the sky, so I'll come in with a mask and say brush, and this time I'll just paint this adjustment into the sky. So again, I'm gonna go kind of quick and sloppy here. Uh, but I'm just showing you how you can customize the look of a photo using layers and the curves tool. So you can go from uh, basically a, an image that's kind of flat, lacking contrast, lacking a little bit of color pop, um, into that where you have a bit more color pop, a little bit more contrast. I think I've managed the colors and tones. I'd probably experiment with this one a little bit more, but that layer was just going into the sky and you can kind of see how that's had an impact on the photo. I actually might come in and add a new adjustment layer and maybe add a tiny bit more contrast just to bump that up a little bit. Um, I don't know, I just kind of like it a little bit more as a contrasty image. I kind of like that. And I actually think the blues in the concrete have creeped back a little bit, so I'm gonna pull that down. And I'm gonna go, ooh, you know what? So here's the thing. I just did that overall contrast adjustment, but I can't go mask it in and the blue because I'd be masking both of them. So I'm gonna leave it like that, get one more layer, and with this adjustment layer, I'm gonna go in and pull those blues down a little bit and mask it in. Same thing I did on that second layer. I'm gonna say paint, and I'm gonna go paint that in here just because I don't want too much blue in that concrete. Um, I think it's gonna kind of ruin the photo for me a little bit. So something about like that, and all I'm doing is experimenting. I don't really have an exact plan with this photo other than showing you how you can stack layer upon layer upon layer and continue to use the light tool with uh, the tone curve and the various color adjustments to you know go from something that's kind of a you know basic kind of flat image to something that's a bit more contrast, a bit more color pop, and you can use layers to mask it in selectively. So it gives you a lot of control. And that's one of the things I really like about the, the tone curve this is so much power, so much control. It definitely, I think, requires some experimentation, but I highly recommend, especially if you're at home, sort of quarantining, um, get in there, experiment, learn to use it, and uh, just have fun with it because it's a very powerful tool. I think in the beginning, it can be very intimidating, but it gives you a lot of control over your photo and a lot of power to make you know, really specific adjustments around tones and colors, which is a big part of editing, right? So. That's my um, sort of tips and tricks video on the tone curve. I highly recommend you just take different images, experiment with it, see what you come up with. And I hope that it helps my friends. Thank you for watching, I do appreciate it. And um, I'll see you soon with another video. So take care of yourself out there, stay safe and healthy. Have a great day, thanks for watching. I'll see you later and adios.